This conference will now be recorded. Okay. Um, so agenda, uh, I'm just writing the agenda over here for now. So first thing that we'll discuss is like, uh, what is performance testing? Okay. Uh, the second thing is, because it is load runner tool, right? Uh, so we will be discussing about load runner architecture, a bit of load runner architecture. And then we'll also see a sample uh, record and replay of the script. Then we'll also discuss about uh, course content. And finally, uh, like Q and A. Okay, so, uh, okay. So before I start, do you have anything uh, from your end to uh, let me know? So we'll, we'll continue uh, with this agenda for today. Okay, so please make a note uh, of all the questions you have and if you can also paste it in the chat window. Okay, so what is uh, performance testing? To, to explain this, I would like to um, explain this particular slide for now. Um, so this slide is explaining about the core software testing. So in as part of the software development life cycle, uh, like we we have uh, like in the development life cycle, we have requirements gathering phase. Uh, we have design phase, we have a development phase, and then we have testing phase. That means if, if a particular software has to be uh, developed, first it will uh, initiate with the requirements, like understanding all the requirements of what needs to be done. And then uh, the design phase will uh, get started. And then after that, the development will be uh, taken care and then followed by testing. So as part of software testing, we have the functional testing and the non-functional testing. Okay, so functional testing uh, is all about uh, testing the functionality of the application. So it primarily focuses on the um, the core functionality aspect. Okay, so for example, mm, not from any software perspective, but in general, if you see, uh, let's take an example of a uh, lift. Uh, for example you are on the ground floor now you want if you want to go to third floor uh, you go inside the lift and press three right third three button so if you press three that means you should be going to third floor i mean the lift should be um, going to third floor that means the functionality is working fine that means we are testing the functionality so if i want to go to fourth floor i just press four and i'll see whether it is going to fourth floor or not okay so so similarly like with respect to application uh, if i ask you to test uh, login uh, for any of the application so what would you generally do uh, generally you launch the application uh, you enter some valid username and valid password and then you verify whether the uh, user is able to log in successfully or not right that's that's just an example of uh, functional testing okay so here, uh, specifically with respect to functional automation, we use some of the tools like Selenium, UFT, uh, etc. Okay. Uh, then what is non-functional testing over here? Uh, no, non-functional testing primarily focuses on uh, like aspects like uh, performance, security, usability, etc. Now we, as a performance testers, we are primarily focused on performance aspect. So what do you mean by performance? So if you take the same example of, of the lift, what we have discussed a few minutes ago, like if I go to the, go, go inside the lift and press three, okay? So it's not about how, it's not about whether it is going to third floor or not. It's about how fast it is going to third floor. Okay, or how much time it is taking to go to third floor. Okay, so that is uh, testing the performance uh, aspect. Okay, and 
generally uh, when you when you when you when you talk about the lift it has some capacity right let's say when you go inside the lift i know it will be written like max capacity is 10 people eight people something like that now if all 10 people are in the, in the lift then and if you press 3 then how much time it is taking to go to third floor or how fast it is going to go to third floor okay that is if that is important for us from performance testing perspective okay so as same thing with respect to the software application uh, let's again take the example of login now generally we launch the application you enter some username and password and you click on login button yeah. now no no performance tester primarily focuses on how fast the user is able to navigate to home page like once once the user enters username and password and click submit button so how fast the user is able to navigate to home page or how fast the user is able to navigate from one page to another page is what a, a performance tester will focus okay so uh, the tools that we have in market are like load runner jmeter gatling neo load uh, there are so many tools available in the market but uh, most widely used tools are load runner and jmeter okay the market share for these two tools will will almost comprise of like 80 percent approximately okay like both of these so load runner is licensed tool uh, whereas jmeter is open source okay so this is a primary difference between uh, functional testing and non-functional testing. So we, as part of this course, will focus on this and especially this particular tool, Load Runner. Okay. Uh, now, uh, you might get a doubt like uh, why performance testing is important or for what reason we need to do, how is it going to impact the business, right? So for that, uh, let me explain you with this particular slide. So if you see this point here, if performance testing is not conducted, then applications might face problems like slowness, or pages loading forever, or inconsistency, and definitely it will result in business loss. Uh, I'm not sure if you remember, in the year 2013 or 14, uh, the, there was, I mean, one of the e-commerce uh, application, they introduced uh, the big sale for the first time. Okay, I'm not sure like how many of you remember. I think it's in 2013, 12, 13, 14, sometime at that point of time. So, uh, so they, they announced a big sale for the first time. So what happened on that particular day, let's say the big sale start was about to start at 12 p.m. So what happened exactly at 12 p.m. is like, um because it's a big sale announced for the first time normally obviously curiosity will be more right so more people will log in to see what exactly is, are the offers and what exactly is that big sale so so many people logged in or access that e-commerce application so what suddenly what happened the application crashed so what does that mean that means that even the even the application team they didn't expect that these many users will log in you know, on that particular day. So beyond their capacity, the number of users logged in and what happened? Uh, the server was not able to, the application was not able to withstand the, uh, the load. The load means the number of users and then it crashed. And then after that, till now, I haven't seen any e-commerce application getting crashed mostly on big sales because from then onwards they started taking care of all these uh, performance issues they they before they go uh, announce big sale they check whether whether their application is able to uh, withstand th these many number of users like 10000 20000 1 lakh users 2 lakh users like that okay just just giving an example so performance testing is very very important if we, if see and one more thing like if the user is not satisfied with the performance of an application definitely there is a chance that the users might shift or switch to another application of with similar features right for example um, like you have an email um, let's say you want to attach uh, you want to add some attachments and then you want to send an email but when you try to add an attachment it is taking so much time okay that's if it's happening once or twice that's fine but if it's happening intermittently uh so what what could happen the user might might not be satisfied 
with the email service provider and the, the user might switch to another email service provider obviously right same thing with gaming also if you are if you are installing any application in mobile uh, let's say gaming and all if you keep playing the games and if the mobile uh, screen freezes or if it loads forever okay then what will if, and if it happens intermittently what will happen we stop using that application we switch to another application or game uh, which has similar features or similar uh, options right so that means the the there is a direct loss in terms of business in terms of users in terms of business which will obviously affect the uh, revenue as well right so performance testing is very very important that every application will have to uh, go through this performance testing phase and then if they feel that the uh, the application will be able to withstand the expected uh, number of users then only they will uh, deploy it into production that means then only they will go live that means they will allow the real users to access the application okay so this point is very very important okay i mean if you are a beginner in performance testing like two years three years also this is one of the possible question also they might ask you okay what happens if i don't do performance testing what will happen who cares like you know if they ask you some questions like that just to test what exactly you know about performance testing or what are the consequences if you're not doing the performance testing then uh, this this point will be uh, helpful in answering that question as well okay and the first point is also very clear if you see the goal of performance tester is to find performance bottlenecks rather than finding functional bugs functional bugs means functional defects so here also again uh, bottleneck means issues only okay it's not uh, something new but the terminology that we use is bottleneck if someone is asking you like what what sort of bottlenecks that you identified as part of your previous projects then you should understand that you know they they are they were asking about the performance issues that we identified as part of our test performance testing okay so why performance testing is very important it's very clear hope hope it is very clear as of now right so uh, okay so same thing now when it comes to software application okay when it comes to software application uh like I told you, right in the in the in the in the example of the lift, I told you, right instead of one user, uh, what if what if there is max capacity in the lift and then they press three button, and then we are analyzing the performance of the lift. That means how much time it is taking to go to third floor with all the capacity with full capacity of the lift. Similarly, with respect to the software application that we are we will be testing so what is the max number of users that the application might support okay so keeping that in mind uh, we'll be doing the performance testing for that application for example let's say i'm i'm doing a performance testing for one bank banking application now bank now banking client will say that hey for my application i i expect that approximately thousand users will login at any point of time and they perform various actions like they transfer money they download statement they pay credit card bill whatever they do so so what we have to do as part of performance testing we have to go ahead and do the performance testing with thousand users like according to the client requirement okay so we'll discuss uh, further I, I just want you to understand the core definition of performance testing i mean the core difference between functional testing and performance testing so performance tester will primarily focus on the speed of the application mostly like you know how fast is the application responding how fast the pages are loading how fast the user is able to transfer sorry navigate from one page to another page and so on okay so hope you guys hope you got a generic definition i mean not not we didn't discuss any textbook definition guys okay i just want to make you understand the generic definition of a performance testing we are not going to discuss any textbook definitions because in interview in interviews also they are not going to ask you any text uh, any textbook definitions they'll try to understand they'll try to uh, 
uh, you know they'll try to uh, ask you questions in a more generic way to analyze uh, the knowledge okay uh, the knowledge of at the con at the uh, concept level okay so uh, okay so here uh, hope hope you guys understood at least a bit of what is performance testing i can take one minute pause here because uh, of course we have so many things to discuss um, it's 8:20 so i'll just take one one minute pause uh, i request you to ask your ask questions if you have any as of now so did you guys understand uh, or did you guys get a basic idea of what is performance testing at least okay okay so let's let's move ahead and uh, discuss about this load runner architecture guys um, the, uh, i mean there are many tools in the market when, when it comes to performance testing so it could be load runner j meter neo load gatling and so on as i said the most widely used tools in the market are uh, sorry load runner and j meter uh, so JMeter is open source, LoadRunner is licensed. Okay. Now, uh, what is a common question that you are getting now? No, I am just asking you, like, what is the next question that you are thinking of? Can anyone, can anyone tell me, like, what is the next question that you have in your mind now? When I say there are many, there are many tools in the market, and I said like LoadRunner and JMeter are most widely used tools, then what, what is that you are thinking of, thinking of now? The most common question that, that generally, uh, you know, uh, they ask is, uh, let me check, there is some, okay, then some messages in with me, let me one second, there are some messages, private messages, one second. Okay, uh, yes, Asif, thank you. Uh, uh, yes, okay. So the question that you guys might get is, uh, like, uh, which tool is good or which tool is better? or like what should i do should i go with load runner or should i go with j meter these are most possible most uh, possible okay uh, frequently asked questions actually in every demo obviously so the 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 thing is both tools are good actually in their own way even though one is licensed one is open source load runner is uh, licensed by uh, owned by microfocus as of now and the advantage is like i mean it that this tool load runner is there since ages so many years it's been there so many years okay like now it, it's a benchmark tool in the market i can say for sure because first first reason is it's there since ages second reason is this is the only tool in the market which supports wide variety of protocols i'll tell you what is protocol later but it is the only tool in the market which will support more number of tools than any other tool in the market number two number three because it is licensed the clients who are using this product will always get continuous support from microfocus for all the issues they face even if they are unable to resolve it and especially especially when the clients have projects um, i mean with with uh, you know with new technologies for example last year or something like that we start we used load runner to test mongodb because mongodb is something new right i mean it's there but most frequently recently in recent days they started using it most frequently so because even though i mean we are testing load uh, mongodb performance for the first time through load runner so obviously we need some information right so because we have purchased a license from microfocus definitely we get a support from them so they, they assisted us in developing scripts documentation and all those stuff okay that's the kind of support they give us okay when you purchase a license from them and the security is very very impo important aspect especially the banking and financial institutions right like uh, I'm, I'm just taking some examples okay 
for example, like Bank of America, JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, Citibank, Morgan Stanley, so many are there, so many banks. They prefer to, I mean, generally banks, they give more for, uh, priority to data, their data security. So, and I mean, obviously when it's a license tool, it's more secure to uh, use uh, their applications with license tools, right? Because data will data will not be having i mean there is there will not be any issue with respect to the data breaches and all those things now when it comes to open source right there is a chance that you know with the data can be leaked or something like that so they don't want to take risk so that's the reason many banking and financial institutions they prefer load runner okay i'm not saying they won't they don't use jmeter at all but they more prefer uh load runner over jmeter okay um now when it comes to of, of course this course is about load runner but i would like to tell a couple of points on jmeter as well so jmeter is open source it also supports some of the protocols okay it is also emerging in the recent past with all the wide variety uh, protocol support and uh, uh, and and uh, uh, yeah so both are equally important now, if you ask me which one to go with, now actually in, with the with the current trend, they are asking both the tools. I mean, they are asking, uh, they are looking for a candidate who has knowledge on both the tools, like both Loadrunner and JMeter. So that doesn't mean that you should learn both at a time. Never do that. So just learn any one of the tool first, complete that, and then learn another one. Because if you try to learn both at a time, you end up learning only 30% of both the tools approximately. Okay, which is not good enough to crack any interviews as well. So complete one one tool first and then go for other tool. Okay, so now with uh, okay. So if you have any questions with respect to load runner and JMeter, apart from apart from whatever we have discussed, make a note of it and just we'll discuss at the end in the Q and A. Okay, now let's back coming back to load runner because this is all about load runner course. So let's discuss load runner architecture so the load runner architecture i'm going to derive the architecture based on some questions for example okay for example um, let's say there is a banking application or any in so in fact any application but let's take a banking application now uh, if i ask you to test if I ask you to test uh, uh, any banking application with 500 users, that means what I'm trying to tell, what I'm trying to explain is, when 500 users log in into the bank application and perform various actions, like how the application is responding. Okay, so I want you to test the banking application with 500 users. That means 500 users should log in, right? Now, how do you test this? How do you test this? Will you bring 500 people and give them 500 laptops or 500 desktops, 500 laptops or 500 desktops and ask them to log in into the bank application and, uh, you know, perform some actions like transfer money, download statement, something like that. Is it possible? According to you, is it possible? No, right? So, say, okay, let's say if it is possible. One second, one second, guys. Oh, sorry. Okay. So let's say, uh, let's say it is possible. But then if I ask you to test with 1000 users or let's say 5000 users, will you bring 5000 people and ask them and give them 500 lap, sorry, 5000 laptops or uh, desktops and ask them to sit at one place and log in? It's not possible, right? So that's the reason we have one component called load runner sorry load generator now this component load generator is primarily uh, primarily used to uh, simulate virtual users okay so this particular component load generator is primarily used to simulate virtual users what virtual users do they um they simulate the human actions or human behavior or human actions or, or basically they mimic the human actions they mimic human actions like clicking a link or clicking a button something like that so 
uh, because we cannot bring uh, 5000 users and real users right we can simulate virtual users using a load generator load generator is also a machine a highly configured machine with some good amount of memory like 16 gb ram 32 gb ram sorry basically 32 gb ram a good cpu processor like that okay now we know we need not bring real users i mean this this component can generate uh, users for us okay and those users will mimic human actions okay now uh, generally when when we test a banking application right so what are the important scenarios you you feel like uh, for banking application can anyone tell any one of the important scenario for banking application in, in scenario means like uh, important feature or important functionality uh, like once we will uh, like in the applic uh, browser and uh, and the particular support like, like uh, we will take any one of the icsc bank once we'll uh, log in and there uh, once login we will do the some uh, actions like uh, amount transfer uh, yeah, these are good. the actions we'll do. after that we will do the logout we'll call uh, this entire thing one scenario good good so here let's say uh, transfer money is one of the important scenario for any banking application right so what are the steps what are the steps uh, we generally what are the steps that we execute or we 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 rep i mean what are the steps to reproduce so let's say the user will first launch the application then user will log into the application then user will uh, navigate to let's say savings account okay then user will select a beneficiary right then user will enter amount user will enter amount and click transfer right user will enter amount and click transfer then basically log out these are the possible steps correct me if i am wrong right so launch login navigate to savings account select a beneficiary to whom you want to transfer money and then enter amount and click transfer and then log out now if you want to execute this particular scenario with 500 or 1000 users what will you do how will you do it with 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 1000 virtual users because we anyways have virtual users right if I want to execute this transfer money steps, these steps with some thousand users or 2000 users or 5000 users like that, then how we will do that? So for these steps, we need to uh, generate a script or, or develop a script which can be executed by all the virtual users, probably simultaneously or concurrently. Okay, so that means you need a component to develop or generate scripts okay uh, generate scripts for the uh, functionalities different functionalities that we have to test right that particular component is called viewgen so viewgen is a component which is used to record or generate or develop a script for any specific functionality like it could be transfer money or download statement or pay credit card bill or whatever it is i'm just taking an example of a bank otherwise there are so many let's take an e-commerce application like purchase order cancel order modify order window shopping anything can be like 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 that okay now you have virtual users ready now you have let's say scripts also ready to execute now the what is the next step obviously execution for execution whatever the scripts that we developed here you can upload those scripts into a component called controller or performance center so these scripts whatever you develop here you upload here and then configure the load test and then you can trigger the execution basically the execution won't happen there but you trigger the execution there okay now when you trigger the execution obvious uh, like there is another flow uh, which i will tell you in our upcoming session like 
the files and everything will transfer to load generator machine and the actual execution will happen here because the virtual users are residing here right we are just taking the scripts from here and sending all the scripts to load generator and from those users will run those scripts in this machine okay and the data will be exchanged to and fro this data exchange process will be taken care by agent process there is something called agent process which will take care of it it acts like it acts as a bridge between controller and load generator machine okay now let's say the execution is done now you have to analyze the results obviously because end of the day if you want to say whether the application is performing well or not i mean it all depends on how it is uh, it all depends on the results that we are getting right so and results analysis is very very important so for that we have a separate component called analysis now this component is primarily responsible for analyzing the results so guys uh, load generator is for simulating virtual users view gen is for recording or generating or developing the script controller or performance center is to configure a scenario and trigger the execution and analysis is for analyzing the results so all in all these are the different components of load runner architecture okay now let's say if i want to develop a script now okay i want to develop a i want to record or develop some sample script now tell me which component i have to uh, use we use and we need, uh, we need to use we use obviously according to the architecture uh, the script that sorry the component that we use for recording or generating or developing the script is vuegen so what we do uh, so once you install right you just search for vuegen okay it will open and it it will display this icon and you can click on it okay the installation and all we'll see later but whenever you want to record or generate or develop the script you have to use vuegen okay so now what i am going to do is i am going to record uh, like only like you know let's say like two or three steps for today basically like let's say i am going to launch one application then i am going to log into one application and then i am going to log out of the application guys these three steps i'll do for some sample application because this is just a demo session right so let me open that sample application as well Mm, one second. So this is the sample application, guys. Just for demo purpose. So. I, I i'm gonna launch this application like how i have launched it now with this particular url and then i'm gonna log in with some username and password okay and then i'm gonna log out i guess see login is successful it is showing welcome and then i'm gonna log out so these are the three steps that we'll record now and we'll see how it's how the script is getting recorded and then how to replay the script we'll see okay so now i'm going i'll go to i'll close this uh, mozilla not required i'll, I'll this, this is how the vuegen screen will appear as soon as you launch it so here you have a button called file okay i mean in the, in the menu option the menu option click on file click on file oh, one second guys uh, Okay, I was getting some echo. Okay. Okay, so this is how you get to see the Vuegen screen. Now you click on File, and there are different options here. We'll discuss later. So you just click on File and click on New Script and Solution. And here, uh, you will see this pop-up window. 
so you get to see so many protocols like that's fine i mean when you are uh, working with any web application right uh, that means any application which you launch in the browser with http https you have to use this protocol web http html i'll tell you what is protocol in tomorrow or day after tomorrow session so uh, web http html is a protocol that you have to select for any web application by default and then choose the path like where exactly you want to save let's change the path let's create some new folder for uh one second uh, one second guys okay so let me create one new folder here okay i created one new folder in this folder i'm gonna i want to save the script and that script name let's say i'm giving it as demo for today Script name is demo and the location where I want to save is this particular location. And then click create. So when you click on create, uh, a default uh, script will be created. Blank script will be created with default layout. Okay. So let me close this. So this is how the script default script will be a blank or empty script will be there like this. So we'll have to, so many options are there over here. Uh, this is where the code will be generated once you record the flow. This is the solution explorer where you have different options to work with, which we'll discuss one by one in our next sessions. For now, what we have to do is, I want to record the three steps, right? Like launch, login, log off. To record, I can use this icon or I can click on this menu option and I can click on record also. Like here, I have record and then record again or you can use shortcut key control r control plus r also but generally we guys frequently use this record icon which is a straightforward app so just click on this record icon and when you can you get a pop-up window here uh, then ignore this for time being we'll see discuss later see you have to choose the browser like which browser you want to use for recording see you can use any browser there is no restriction you can use Firefox, you can use Edge, or you can use Chrome, okay? Let's say I'm using Firefox for now. And then here you have to give your project URL, the application that you want to test, that URL you have to give. Let's say the URL is this one, localhost, this one, the application URL, which I launched just now. This is a URL I want to launch in this browser. Okay, uh, just one second. I'll just quickly go to recording options. I'm not explaining those now. But I'm just checking like because generally I keep changing these options uh, frequently as per the requirement. Okay. So now I have given the browser. I've selected the browser. I've given the application URL. I'm not going to select anything as of now in today's session. I'll explain you these things in maybe, maybe in, a day, in two days, in one or two days. So then I'll click on start recording. Just click on start recording. Okay, so when you click on start recording, the Mozilla Firefox browser will launch with the given URL. Whatever the application URL I have given, with that URL, the uh, I mean the browser will launch with that particular URL like this. At the same time, you see a movable window over here. Okay, kind of movable window. And then you see there will be some number here which keeps on increasing actually if that number is increasing it's actually a good sign that means the tool is able to record the application successfully without any issues okay mostly the, the number keeps on increasing generally whenever you perform any action on the ui the number might keep on increasing okay because whatever the actions you perform for those actions the tool will capture the backend requests okay backend uh, now there are different options over here like stop recording pause recording cancel recording 
and uh, like uh, comments checkpoints and all we'll see all of them later but let's discuss these two for today so this is start recording insert start recording this is insert end recording okay basically whenever you want to perform a step or execute a, execute a step on the ui for that particular step you need to first insert a transaction and then go ahead and perform the action on the ui and then once you once you're done with the action on the ui then come here and click on end transaction then what is the advantage of that is it will assist you in calculating uh, the amount of time it has taken to execute that particular step okay for example can anyone tell what is the next step that we are going to do what is the next step that i'm going to execute what is the next action i'm going to perform on the ui Tell the user no I mean, in in a way, it is login, right? The next action that I'm, the next action that I'm going to perform is login, right? So here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to insert start transaction. I'm going to click on this, and I'm going to give a name for it called login, and then click OK. Now, once you click OK, here you see this button getting enabled now, but then don't click it. First, you have to go and perform the action over here. And then come here and click on this particular end transaction. So here, go ahead and enter the username and password and click enter. Now the user logged in successfully. That is, login is done. Now wait for five seconds at least so that the page loads completely. Or at the same time, you can also check here, like when uh, the page is loaded successfully or not. And now you click on this insert end transaction and then end log select login login is done now what about next step what is the next action that i'm going to perform according to our requirement according to our requirement what is the next step that i'm going to perform log out log out right so i'll click on uh, i'll click on insert start transaction again and then i'll click on log i'll select log out and, and then click ok now i'll go ahead and click on sign out button so there is a sign out button on the left hand side i'm going to click it and then i'm gonna wait for five seconds though and, and I'm, at, at the same time i'm gonna see whether the page is loaded successfully or not and then i'm gonna click on this particular logout button now we are done with recording now i'm going to click on stop recording now as soon as i click on stop recording the tool will generate the script for the functionality or the steps that i have executed Right now it is still generating one second. Oh, uh, I, I clicked on stop recording, right? Let me check what happened. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, oops. One second guys. Uh, okay. Six GB is free. I mean, sometimes uh, my laptop has some memory issues. One second. One second, guys. Uh, for some reason, it is not getting. Uh, uh, it's actually because of the memory issue only, mostly. Uh, in the recent past, uh, because of this memory issue, it's uh, not getting. Uh, one second. Let's wait. Uh, hope it gets recorded. Hope it gets. It should generate the script, by the way. 
one second. Okay, let me do one thing. Mm, let me go to task manager and uh, see like whether it is responding or not due to some memory issues only. I'll clean up the memory guys, by the way. Um, for the next session, I'll clean up all the unwanted things. So here, it is not using any CPU as of now. Uh, let me kill this and restart Vuechen once again quickly and then let's see if it if it recorded or not so ideally it should record uh, but I didn't see any pop-up like script getting generated or something like that that's the reason let's see let me open that uh, if that is already created right Let's see if it is generated or not. Otherwise, we can record again. Okay, so this is a script which we created. Oh, it didn't record or what? Um, okay, so let me do one thing. Uh, let me uh try to close some unwanted things and clean up some memory for this quickly okay uh let me record again quickly with the help of a uh, browser i'll i'm not i'll not uh one second let me check this okay let me click on start recording again So again, you see the browser launched with the given URL. So this time I'm gonna quickly record it, guys. So because you already, you you guys already have seen the the way to record, right? So here I'm gonna add a name to it and start transaction, login. I'm gonna click on Jojo and Bean. That's a username and password. Wait for five seconds. And then start new transaction logout. Then click on logout. And then probably wait for five seconds again. Then logout. And then uh, stop recording. Let's see. Hopefully this time it should get recorded. So yeah, I mean the pop-up, it should have, it should be like this, like it is generating the script like you see. I don't know what happened previously, but maybe I clicked some other button or I don't know. Okay. So here, uh, if you if you click on the action, so this is how the code got generated. Okay. I hardly some 60, 50, 60 lines of code, but I want you to understand a couple of things here very quickly. So if you see uh, in line number 33, it says LR start transaction login. So how is it coming up here? The reason is when I was recording the script, there was a movable window where I clicked on insert start transaction button, right? And I have given name called login. For that reason, this piece of code got generated. If you see line number 52, LR underscore end underscore transaction and then login we are ending ending here. So that means after performing the action, I clicked on end transaction and I ended login right on the on the mobile window. Because of that, this piece of code got generated. Now you have a LR start transaction, you have LR sorry, LR start transaction and you have LR end transaction. In between you have this piece of code. This that means this piece of code belongs to login. If you want, you can check. We have passed username Jojo and value bean like that. Now, if you see line number 
54 lr start transaction logout right lr start transaction logout how is this coming up because in the in the move on the move will bin, window i clicked on insert start transaction i have added logout right that's the reason this piece of code got generated and you see line number 66 lr end transaction logout that means uh I mean, after performing the action, I ended the transaction, right? So that's the reason this piece of code got generated. And uh, whatever the code you have between LR start transaction logout and LR end transaction logout, this piece of code belongs to logout. Now this is logout, right? From here to here. And then here you see login. Uh, can anyone tell what this piece of code is? Ignore this, by the way, ignore this, not required. Can anyone tell what this piece of code is by any chance? Can you can you any guess like what this piece of code is all about? A launch. Obviously, launch because before logging, what did we do? We launched the application, right? But yeah. what is the difference? Here, if you see for this request, there is no LR start transaction and LR end transaction. Did you guys notice that? There is no LR start transaction and there is no LR end transaction for that. The reason is, even before the mobile window came up, even before the mobile window came up, already the application was launched. Yes or no? For example, when I click on start rec this record option, see, when I click on start recording, I, I'm getting a mobile window. At the same time, I'm also seeing the browser already open with the given URL. I mean, even before I click on insert start transaction, the application is already launched. You got it? That's the reason you don't have LR start transaction for launch. However, you can add it manually. LR underscore start underscore transaction. Like this you can add. Okay, and then you give launch for this name, give a name for this launch. Now, can anyone tell after which line I have to write LR end transaction for this? Because obviously, if there is a LR start transaction, there should be LR end transaction for that. Now, after which line I can write that? Any guess? After the think time? Uh, no, before think time you have to write. Okay, after 31. So here you can write LR underscore end underscore transaction like this you can write all small letters only guys you should not use capital letters okay now here you have to give the same name you have to give the same name and you have to give uh, like you know, there will be something called lr auto which i'll explain later but what i want to tell you is the whatever the name you are giving here the same name should be going here so, okay now if i replay this okay now if i replay this with this particular by clicking on this particular icon if you see here now probably i should get some results some basic results i should get let's see what is the information that we are getting so the basic information that we are getting is if you see launch has taken 0 0.54 seconds login has taken 0 0.3 Eight, eight seconds logout has taken 0 0.359 seconds that means that means when i am replaying the script this request will get executed first that launch and it has and when i execute this i'm getting the response from the application server i'll tell you what is application server but from the application i'm getting response in 0 0.54 seconds for launch that means when i use this url the page is loading you know almost approximately in 0 0.54 seconds like that then login is it is taking like 0 0.388 logout is taking approximately some uh, like 0 0.359 like that so that means you you are getting to see like how each transaction is performing okay so hope you got some clarity and idea about the view chain component as well. Uh, very, very important component for on which we'll be working for next to probably three weeks. Uh, in fact, more than that. So very, very, very important. Okay, for, for, from learning perspective, from interview perspective as well. 
okay so now with that going back to our agenda okay let me open the course content for you guys so course content uh, basically this course is uh, for everyone guys for like for from basic to advanced for everyone okay it's not only for uh, the guys who are in it i mean anyone from non it also can join and uh, master the tool Pro provided that the 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 person is practicing for at least one month okay daily so now the course basically we this we start discussing with architecture basics introduction to performance testing and then very very important concepts from interview point of view the theoretical concepts of proof of concept nfr test plan workload modeling and then how do you install load runner what are the components what are the features what are the best scripting practices transaction names naming conventions debugging options uh, understanding the script and excluding unnecessary requests then you have like runtime settings okay so runtime settings is uh, i mean these runtime settings will allow assist you in executing the script uh then you have uh, recording options like these recording options will assist you in script recording then you have checkpoints checkpoints means assertions if you guys are coming from uft or selenium you might all you might already know what what, what is assertion the same thing that we, we call it checkpoints here in jmeter we call assertions here we call checkpoints okay then a very important question is coding required to learn load runner or jmeter in fact it's it's a, it's yes but very little bit only not too much hardly hardly like 3 4 sessions for that so based on the topics that we discuss in those 3 4 sessions it is more than enough to write your own scripts or develop your own scripts or customize your own scripts okay all very basics like Uh, for example what is variable data types if statements loops and conditions select case statements functions so basically these are very common very basics of any programming language okay if you are completely new to it never ever worry about these concepts okay it's very easy to learn hardly 3 4 sessions max then you have some c language inbuilt functions and load runner inbuilt functions and some like uh, how do you write data to file how do you read data from a file what are the real time challenges in scripting that we frequently observe then what is correlation okay then what is correlation uh, very very important concept this we will discuss for 3 to 4 sessions it is that important that if you don't know how to correlate then probably you end up uh, you know uh, you end up not doing any scripting it's that important and then you have parameterization which we'll discuss for two three sessions three sessions where uh, it's all about passing different sorts of test data to the script instead of passing or instead of passing the same test data again and again uh, passing different sorts of test data then you have controller uh, from till here the execution i mean the learning scripting will be completed mostly i'll tell you one more point after uh, in next slide but after that you will discuss about controller like how to create scenarios how do you uh, what are the different types of scenarios you create executing a load test runtime settings etc sls and then analysis how do you analyze the results what are the different metrics that you analyze what are the different graphs that you monitor okay then finally you have like analyzing the results and providing observations drafting email to with all observations to your client interview question and answers and then scripting practice on multiple applications because the more scripting the more applications you practice the more uh, challenges you face the more uh, the more uh, you learn for sure okay and then you have something called virtual table server okay a very very important from interview perspective as well so like i said we are not going to work only on sample application but we are go we are also going to discuss about sorry we are also going to work on various other applications as well including our own application isha training solutions.com then these are all the bonus topics uh, these topics are uh, added to this course just because my participants needs to know that in the interviews and all those stuff they are asking way more than load runner and jmeter also so i want my participants to understand like what exactly they are asking from the interview point of view and what exactly you have to concentrate apart from load runner and jmeter i have i have added few sessions for those like apm tools 
um, app dynamics or dynatrace like for this i'll take one one live session either for app dynamics or dynatrace and then one i'll give you one recorded session either for app dynamics or dynatrace okay i mean apm tools are very very important nowadays to monitor the application performance so uh, very 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 important uh, tools guys dynatrace and app dynamics basically they are apm tools and then you have see uh, i want my participants to know like what is cicd jenkins i want my participants to have some idea about the cicd and how performance testing is related to this and then you trigger some local scenario from jenkins and there is one more protocol that we'll be discussing called true client uh, and then we'll like i have one session for true client as well and i have one session to understand what is thread dumps what is heap dumps uh, i have one session to understand like what is load balancer algorithms and connecting to database and what is this awr report and how do you find bottlenecks and also not recorded sessions basically we'll take live sessions of the web services also the rest is the web services not everything is ui right sometimes we test api services we test web services okay uh, so like that we uh, so like that we we are going to add all of this into our course okay so this is the course content guys so now i'm uh, opening the session for q and a so i request uh, you guys to post uh, the questions uh, you ask the questions or you can post it in the chat window anything is fine uh, so i Hello, have a sir? question so for bonus topics you will be showing the recorded session or uh, it will be a live session it will be a live session only except for uh, one or two like uh, like like app dynamics or dynatrace any one will be live one will be recorded session like okay. aws report will be recorded session remaining everything like will be uh, will be live sessions only like web services will be live session only then uh, true client protocol will be one live session then dynatrace can be one live session then heap dumps and thread dumps analysis will be one live session right so jenkins okay. will be one live session like that Okay. Jenkins, okay, uh, yeah. Yeah. Anyone else having any questions? Uh, course. Uh, the session timings. Yeah, India same time. time. Yeah, same time. India okay. time, 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Monday to Friday. And okay. uh, and if you have any questions, right? I, I'll generally I'll be available on WhatsApp. You can reach out to me. I'll ping you after this. Uh, you know, after this, I'll ping you in the group. You can reach out to me as well. If you have any further queries related to the course and all the stuff, you can reach out to me. Uh, and then, uh, anyone from non-IT and who are interested to join, do let me know. Because generally, what I do is, um, I generally plan to take one additional session for non-IT guys, just ma just to make them familiar with the terms and terminologies that we use in performance testing. Because especially who is whoever is coming from non-IT, right? They should understand the terms and terminologies, right? So learning the tool is okay, good. But at the same time, if you want to work, you have to understand like how the project works, how you get the requirement, what are the terms and terminologies that we fre fre that you frequently use, and all those stuff. Okay, if it is like a long gap, like almost ten years gap, also will give any like extra session, like. Yeah, I mean, basically, basically that session is that that session is primarily focused for non-IT, but that doesn't mean that only only those guys should join. Everyone can join in in a way. I mean, that will be over. That will be for on one weekend, uh, okay. like probably first weekend uh, or second weekend in our course. I'll take one session on that. If we miss one class, means we provide a, like a uh, recording session for that or. Like, uh, how yeah, good you? question. I see daily, you will get recorded sessions daily. Uh, daily. So that session, yeah, that sessions will be there with you for lifetime. Okay, so whenever you want, you can watch it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so sessions will be from Monday to Friday. Provide? Sorry? Any certification you provide? Yeah, uh, after, after completion of the course, they will give you the course completion certification certificate for you. and uh, uh, yeah one more thing like um, if you see like uh, our primary focus was on 
practicing on multiple applications like four to five applications the reason why we are focusing on practicing on multiple applications is generally guys in real time every application will be little bit new and we might face some new challenges so the more applications you practice the more comfortable you will be for uh, you know with respect to scripting uh so for practicing you will be giving uh, some homework on a regular basis yes, yes. how that so work? yeah so like whenever we practice uh, uh, you know during our session right on that day only i'll give you uh, you know a task that you can you know work work uh, at your place or at your home and if you have any questions you can reach out to me in the next session or you can ping me on whatsapp one to one okay uh, one more question because load runner is a mm -hmm. license base how we are going to get uh, is there yeah there's a trial version can... yeah there's a trial version for it uh, our team will assist you in installing the trial version yeah thank you so that you can practice uh, in your laptops and the, and the trial version will be there it won't go away or something like that basically it, it with, with limited number of users it will be there with you also like if we want to continue this course from tomorrow it will start yeah from tomorrow only it will start yeah mostly it will from tomorrow only you'll get you'll get an update uh, in few minutes or maybe in couple of hours or so about the next session and details but mostly it will be from tomorrow only sure as if uh, don't worry uh, uh, i mean we have a separate session for that and and uh, as i said we uh, like you know this course is for everyone like from it is designed in such a way that it will cover all the basic and advanced concepts sir uh, placement and uh, uh, certification you provide no generally uh, uh, generally kumar sir will let you know if there are any openings uh, uh, but then there is uh, 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 then then you can just reach out to kumar sir on that uh, just ping in the group the same question uh, kumar sir will call you and explain but generally if there are any openings generally kumar sir will let the atten attendants or the participants know about that so that they can uh, give a try uh, but i apart from that if you want to know further information please do reach out to kumar sir uh, he is there in the whatsapp group uh, post your question in the group he will definitely call you back or i'll let him i'll ask them to call you okay but generally as i said if there are any openings they let you know but it is not guaranteed or something like that certification certificate they'll give you post post course completion they'll give you a certificate for this uh, krishik uh, how uh, uh, do we handling this rendering thing uh, things with the load runner in the jmeter uh, as it is uh, when when i am working as a performance tester i am unable mm -hmm. to record the whiteboard uh, digital whiteboard activities uh, through the jmeter uh, those comes under the rendering things uh, do we have yeah. any so so jmeter in jmeter also it will not directly support the browser rendering yeah. rather you have to integrate jmeter with selenium so here uh, you have uh, one protocol called uh, true client which will take care of browser rendering also oh, okay thanks hi kushi yeah tell me uh kushik so are we going to cover uh, lre part or it's not part of our agenda yeah lr is all yeah lr is also there uh, actually so we i mean the controller and lr both will be there so okay. uh, i mean depending on the machine i'm uh, machine availability so re in the recent uh, uh, batch we had we we faced some issue with respect to the machine so what i can assure you as of now is yes lr will be there in worst case i can give you the uh, recorded playlist of the lre also i mean if the if there is some issue with the machines not from our end actually from from the tool side only there was some issue hope it should get rectified if if that is the case we'll have the live sessions on flre also like uh, three four sessions otherwise i can give you the previous batch uh, recorded sessions of lre also or yeah, a separate separate playlist actually so that means actually it has like multiple uh, recorded session so you can go through that and both are same okay sure thanks yeah 
So any other questions? No, as if uh, offline is not there as of now. So only online. Uh, Gayatri, yes. Uh, like what do, what we do is we conduct mock interviews actually after completion of uh, every batch. And also I will share the uh, interview questionnaires. I mean, whatever the questions I personally have noted down with question and answer. So I'll share this document with you. You can actually go ahead and uh, uh, go through this question and answers. Uh, okay. And, and then attend the interview. Okay, uh, so we have uh, we have frequent mock interview sessions also, so which will be taken by some other faculty or some other Kumar sir itself. So you can attend those mock interviews. You you understand? You got my point, right? So that uh, like you know you'll get uh, you, you'll be more comfortable you know in attending the interviews. And do let me know if you are attending any interviews. Like if you let me know at least two at least two days before. So I can connect with you for one uh, you know, 30 minutes or one hour. I can guide you like, you know, how they can ask what type of questions they might ask you. So I can provide my inputs as well, apart from providing these documents. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, perfect. Uh, yeah. So, any Hello, other questions? Sir. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me. Yeah. Sir, what is the future scope in performance testing? Uh, I I told you the slide, right? The one slide that like I told you why performance testing is important. I told you, right? Without performance testing, the product will not go live. Especially if the product is very important for the client. Uh, if they have any performance issues, it will have a direct impact on the business, right? I told you financially also it will have impact. So every client before uh, deploying or before uh, allowing the real users to access it, they do the performance testing. Now, once the application goes through this performance testing phase and if it is successful, then only it will go through the real users, the end users. Okay. So, any AI related uh, tool in there? No, not not uh, in the tool. Uh, but uh, they are actually slowly implementing now only recent personally they they started working on it. No features have been added yet completely. But in in APM tools like Dynatrace, they started adding in the recent past. They started adding more features like. Features in sense like uh, the metrics what they are providing right in APM tools like application monitoring tools like Dynatrace, they started using implementing uh, uh, AI technologies. Like for example, they will tell you uh, when a page is loaded, they will tell you uh, from your eyes point of view, like how much time approximately it is taking for the page to load. Like in the back end, they are using the technologies, uh, the AI technologies, but uh, uh, like once you see the once you see the Dynatrace tool, you will come to know like how good is how good it is in terms of uh, the look and feel. So there's so many options features they have added nowadays. So uh, from analysis point of view, from monitoring point of view, uh, AI is more into picture as of now. But from scripting point of view, uh, from execution point of view, not much of AI in involved as of now. Probably we might see in future. Thank you. Sir. Okay. Uh, any other questions? The timings are like same. This uh, uh, like uh, is there any other timings like? Uh no ma. Okay. Oh, only this time. Only eight to eight a.m. to nine a.m. Actually, yes. there will be one evening batch also, nine p.m. to ten p.m. But that will get started probably after next month. In the next month. Oh, next okay. month ending or something like that or probably jan mm -hmm. also we don't know maybe it can extend yeah, to jan indian, also. Indian, indian timings you are saying yeah indian. 9 pm to 10 pm indian time probably it can get started uh, late also like in the month of jan also we don't know because uh, december end right uh, for yeah, most yeah, of yeah. them it will be holiday session right after because some of the participants will join from on site also like uh, like us uh, uk uh, african and all so yeah, uh, like, yeah, yeah that's the reason US, yeah. so i want like different uh, like i have small kids so that's why i'm asking okay that's oh okay okay mm -hmm. uh, I, then i'll okay um mm -hmm. the next batch is uh, 
will be scheduled um, maybe in next month or maybe in the month of jan starting so what you can do is uh, you can do one thing uh, you can do one thing like uh, uh, let's let ping me one to one i'll tell you a couple one or two options like we'll see okay sure uh, sure okay so whether you can register on this batch and you know you can extend there we'll see sure thank you thank you, thank you. okay and one more thing anyways you will get you are getting recorded uh, sessions right so that will give you uh, an option to go through the recorded session again post uh, live session okay yeah. perfect uh oh. okay uh, so hope i answered uh, all your queries if you have if you still have any further queries right uh, please do reach out to me on whatsapp if you have any queries related to the payment of, or uh, anything please do reach out to kumar sir he is also there in the whatsapp group um, i'll just ping you guys uh, right away after this session okay uh, thanks everyone and have a great rest of the day yeah thank you so much krishan Yeah thank you